There are just four fundamental forces in nature. 1. Electromagnetism. 2. Gravity. 3. The weak nuclear force, and 4. The strong nuclear force. These forces drive all movement and every physical interaction. In each of them, scientists have noticed an inexplicable balancing act. Electromagnetism, and the greatest damn mystery in physics. The movement of a compass's needle is driven by the electromagnetic force. The strength of the electromagnetic force is determined by a dimensionless constant called the fine structure constant, alpha. Alpha equals 0 0.00729351, approximately 1 over 137. Due to alpha having a value of 1 over 137, the speed of an electron in a hydrogen atom is 1 137th the speed of light. It also sets the fraction of electrons that emit light when they strike phosphorescent screens at 1 137th. Determining such fundamental properties as the speed of electrons in atoms means alpha determines how large atoms are, which in turn determines what molecules are even possible. A different alpha would change properties like the melting point of water and the stability of atomic nuclei. Physicists calculated that had alpha differed from its current value by just 4%, the carbon-12 excited energy level would not be in the right place. There would be almost no carbon in the universe if alpha were 1 over 131 or 1 over 144. Quote, it has been a mystery ever since it was discovered more than 50 years ago, and all good theoretical physicists put this number up on their wall and worry about it. Immediately you would like to know where this number for a coupling comes from, is it related to pi or perhaps to the base of natural logarithms? Nobody knows. It's one of the greatest damn mysteries of physics, a magic number that comes to us with no understanding by man. You might say the hand of God wrote that number, and we don't know how he pushed his pencil. We know what kind of a dance to do experimentally to measure this number very accurately, but we don't know what kind of dance to do on the computer to make this number come out, without putting it in secretly. End quote. Richard Feynman in QED, The Strange Theory of Light and Matter, 1985 gravity and the lives and deaths of stars. The gravitational force between an apple and the earth pulls both together. The strength of gravity is determined by a dimensionless constant called the gravitational coupling constant, alpha sub g. Alpha sub g equals 5.907 times 10 to the power of minus 39. It is striking how small alpha sub g is. The smallness of alpha sub g means gravity is exceptionally feeble compared to the other forces, so much weaker, it's an unsolved mystery of physics, called the hierarchy problem. If alpha sub g were larger, you and everything else in the universe would weigh more. Conversely, if alpha sub g were smaller, everything would weigh less. But if gravity weren't so weak, we wouldn't be here. In 1947, the physicist Pasquale Jordan noticed a strange coincidence. He described it in his book The Origin of the Stars. The coincidence he noticed was that the mass of the Sun is suspiciously close to the weight of a proton divided by alpha sub g to the power of 3 over 2. In fact, the mass of nearly every star is within a factor of 10 from this number. There is a reason for this. The electrostatic repulsion between two protons is about 10 to the power of 36 times stronger than their gravitational attraction. Accordingly, once you have around 10 to the power of 36 times 3 halves, or 10 to the power of 54 protons in one place, as in a star, the gravitational attraction between the star and a proton begins to eclipse the strength of two protons repulsion, sparking fusion. But should the mass of a compact object increase much past this level, the star becomes unstable and will either blow itself apart or collapse into a neutron star or black hole at the Chandrasekhar limit. The reason stars are so big is because gravity is so weak. 
If gravity was stronger, everything miniaturizes. Planets, mountains, animals, even the observable universe, need to shrink to not collapse under their weight. See, why are things the size that they are? A stronger gravity not only decreases a star's size, but also its life expectancy. A smaller star leaks heat more quickly. If gravity were ten times stronger, an equivalently hot star would live just one-tenth the time. So if alpha sub g had 37 zeros, rather than 38, after its decimal point, a star like our sun would live not 10 billion years, but 1 billion. Short-lived stars doom complex life. It took billions of years for multicellular life to appear on Earth. The chance for life to appear at all only diminishes as alpha sub g increases. The cosmologist Martin Rees described the astrophysics of a hypothetical universe where alpha sub g is a million times stronger than it is. Quote. Heat would leak more quickly from these mini stars, in this hypothetical strong gravity world, stellar lifetimes would be a million times shorter. Instead of living for 10 billion years, a typical star would live for about 10,000 years. A mini sun would burn faster, and would have exhausted its energy before even the first steps in organic evolution had got underway. End quote. Sir Martin Rees in Just Six Numbers, 1999. Life owes its existence to weak gravity. But we should also be grateful that alpha sub g isn't zero or negative. This leads to disaster of another kind. With zero or negative gravity, no galaxies, stars, or planets form. There would be no place for life to begin for there would be no places at all. The weak nuclear force and the biggest explosions. The weak force is ultimately responsible for the eerie glow surrounding nuclear reactors. The weak nuclear force causes particle decay. The decay rate is set by a dimensionless constant called the weak force coupling constant, alpha sub w. Alpha sub w is approximately 0.000001 or 10 to the power of minus 6. Unstable particles, such as neutrons, muons, and pions, spontaneously convert, or decay, into other particles. For example, in beta decay a neutron decays into a proton, electron, and neutrino. A larger alpha sub W shortens the lives of unstable particles and accelerates radioactive decay. But altering alpha sub W has other consequences. The value of alpha sub w causes the biggest explosions in the universe. The biggest man-made explosion was the 50 megaton Tsar Bomber. It had a yield of 50 million tons of TNT. Its mushroom cloud rose to 42 miles, reaching the edge of space at five times the height of Everest. Yet this explosion is pitiful next to the biggest explosions known. The biggest explosions in the universe are core collapse, supernovae. They release the energy of 10 to the power of 28 Tsar bombs. If each sand grain equaled a billion Tsar bombs, and if every grain of sand on Earth's beach is exploded at once, that would approach the power of a core collapse, supernova. Quote. The neutrino luminosity of a core collapse, supernova briefly exceeds the light output of all the stars of the observable universe. End quote. Craig Hogan in Why the Universe is Just So, 1999. As we've seen, these most powerful explosions depend on the most ghostly of particles, the neutrino. But the explosions also depend on the neutrino having the right amount of ghostliness. Ever so rarely, a neutrino interacts with a particle through the weak nuclear force. For instance, a neutrino might interact with an electron and give it enough energy to knock it away from its atom. This electron, if traveling fast enough, creates a shock wave of light, the optical equivalent of a sonic boom, known as the Cherenkov effect. The effect is named for Pavel Cherenkov, who first noticed it in 1934, earning him a share of the 1958 Nobel Prize in Physics. 
This effect is responsible for the flashes of light neutrino detectors look for, and also the blue glow seen inside nuclear reactors. Since neutrinos feel the weak nuclear force, the value of alpha sub w determines the ease at which neutrinos interact with regular matter, it sets the neutrino's level of ghostliness. Recent models show that had alpha sub w been less than half its current value, neutrinos would leave the collapsing core too quickly to forestall the collapse. Conversely, had alpha sub w been more than five times its current value, then neutrinos would be trapped in the core for too long. Again, they would be unable to prevent the collapse of the star. Recent computer simulations reveal how the largest explosions in the universe are caused by otherwise unassuming particles. Core collapse, supernovae are the source of all free oxygen in the universe. Every breath you take, and drop of water you sip contains oxygen from these stars, blown into space by neutrinos. If alpha sub w had been a little bigger or smaller, elements necessary for life would stay forever trapped in the remnants of giant stars. Accordingly, life as we know it depends on alpha sub w being close to 0 0.000001. The strong nuclear force and sticky nucleons. The strong nuclear force reveals its power whenever atoms split or fuse. The strong nuclear force is the glue that holds atomic nuclei together. The stickiness of this glue is determined by a dimensionless constant called the strong force coupling constant, alpha sub s. Alpha sub s is approximately one. Of the four fundamental forces, alpha sub s is the strongest. It is 137 times stronger than the electromagnetic force, and a million times stronger than the weak nuclear force. Unlike electromagnetism, and gravity, the strong force is range limited. It can only be felt at up to a few femtometers away. A larger alpha sub s makes fusion easier and fission harder. With a smaller alpha sub s, the reverse happens. We are lucky alpha sub s is much larger than alpha. If it weren't, the strong force wouldn't be able to overcome the electrostatic repulsion of protons, and nuclei of atoms wouldn't stay together at all. In such a universe, the only possible atom is hydrogen. Accordingly, if the strong force weren't so strong, we wouldn't be here. In your body, only about 1% of your weight comes from the weight of your constituent particles. The other 99% comes from the binding energy of the strong nuclear force. The reason there are about 100 chemical elements is due to the fact that the strong force is about 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force. But it is a delicate balance. The strong force must not be too strong. Had alpha sub s been 3.7% stronger, fusion would be too easy. All hydrogen would have fused into helium in the first minutes after the Big Bang. There would be no water, no organic compounds, nor fuel for stars like our Sun. Yet, if alpha sub s were 11% weaker, hydrogen 2 wouldn't be stable. Hydrogen 2 plays a necessary role in fusion of stars like our Sun. So with a slightly weaker strong force, again our Sun doesn't shine. A more recent analysis has placed even tighter constraints on alpha sub s, given the details of how carbon and oxygen are produced in the cores of stars. Quote. Even with a change of 0.4% in the strength of the nucleon-nucleon force, carbon-based life appears to be impossible, since all the stars then would produce either almost solely carbon or oxygen, but could not produce both elements. End quote. Luke A. Barnes in The Fine-Tuning of the Universe for Intelligent Life, 2011 Why does alpha sub s have the value it does? No one can say? All we know is that if it didn't, there would be no one here to speculate about it.